Thank you. Okay, so we definitely have a quorum. So I'm going to call the meeting to order and ask for someone to approve the agenda for today's meeting. Um, okay, do we have to do the open meeting law? Oh, thank you for the reminder. Actually, this is the last time I think I have to read this long script. So okay. please bear with me. As a preliminary matter, this is Mary Ann Easley, Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Allison. Yes. Diane. Yes. Vanessa. Not here. Kendra. Kendra is here. Yes. She's here. Jude. Jude is also here. <laughs> Susie is here. Linda, not here. And Marianne here. Okay. So staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. I take it that Jericho is not here, but Laura, are you here? I am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access Access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Council on Aging is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials, okay. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Uh, the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Uh, as it is. Uh, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking, but actually you might want to remember and turn your microphone on so that we can hear you when you speak. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. And that's it for the very last time. Done. <laughs> so that means we're going to meet in person next time? Yes, we will meet in person next time at the Salt Marsh. Oh, yeah, can't wait. <laughs> okay, thank you, Diane, for that reminder. So we'll go back to approval of the agenda. Can somebody please make a motion to approve the agenda? I will. I'll second it. That's Diane, second by Allison. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, everyone in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, everybody might want to turn your microphones on so we can hear you. Um, now we're going to go Aye. to the minutes of the last <laughs> meeting that were provided by Diane. <laughs> I need someone to make a motion to approve those minutes. I approve them. Susie. Second. Second it. Jude. Um, are there any comments before I take a vote? Okay, everyone uh, in favor of approving the minutes of the May 5 meeting, please say aye. 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 Okay, sounds pretty unanimous. 
All right, on to the official business. Um, the, the first item of business I've put on uh, the agenda because um, I, along with Allison, who's our usual representative to the Cape and Islands, um, what is there? Elder <laughs> Services of Cape Cod and the Islands. <laughs> Um, uh, I also attended the latest meeting that they had where they were asking, they were actually presenting the fact that there is our federal funds available that we can apply for um, by um, making a request for proposal. And um, the people who are on the Cape had um, many ideas taken that they've actually talk to, I guess, a lot of seniors, both on the Cape and the islands, and they've come up with a list of issues that they think uh, need to be addressed. Um, I'm not sure that those are exactly what we might want to address. And I thought I'd just leave this topic open for um, sort of wide ranging discussion of everybody's ideas on, um, I think we should go after funds that are available if we need money for uh, projects. Uh, this money is out there. We can apply for it. Doesn't mean we're going to get the money, but uh, usually these grants are somewhere between five thousand and twelve thousand dollars. They are over a year. And um, what else you need to know? Um, our and letter good for of two years. Pardon? And they're good for two years. Oh, okay. That I didn't realize. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Allison, for anything you can add to this. So, uh, I guess I just wanted to hear people's ideas of what you you think might be good programs that we could apply for money for that would benefit seniors on Nantucket? And Alex, Question. Uh -oh. yes, yes. Hmm. Hold on, this is Vanessa, I think. Hello? Sorry about that. It wasn't Vanessa. It was somebody else. Oh, okay. Um, well, I know you probably have a lot to add, so please do. So, um, did did everyone read the um, read what Marianne sent around or Laura sent around? That what are the things that the grant will cover? I did not. I don't I know how I did, it. did Laura send this around? I didn't read anything. I and did so, not read it. So I'll just I'll just quickly go through it. Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands is soliciting proposals for the Title III funds from Older Americans Act. Blah 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 blah. Um, for the delivery of services to elders and caregivers in Barnstable, Dukes, and Nantucket counties, grants will be awarded through a competitive proposal review process to support and extend comprehensive and coordinated services, enabling persons age 60 or over and or their caregivers to remain living in their homes and communities. The, pro the proposals must support and extend access to services, in-home services, or legal services. In addition, separate funding is available for Title III grants which promote good health and well-being. Individual grant awards not to exceed $10,000. Special emphasis mu must be given to rural Elderly, elderly with the greatest economic need, low income minority individuals, disabled and limited English speaking elders, LGBTQ elders, and people with Alzheimer's or other dementia related illnesses and their caregivers. Um, additional priorities include, but not limited to, to increase access to information and services through outreach. So these are the things that they'll fund. Support services which reduce isolation technology, transportation to medical appointments, shopping, social activities, support services for caregivers, home modification, LGBT supportive services, and other innovative programs. Letters of intent are requested from organizations and should be submitted with contact information, a brief program description, budget estimates, number of duplicated, unduplicated elders, caregivers to be served, estimated services, blah, blah, blah. 
the deadline for letters of intent are is Friday, June eleventh. Oh, that's soon. Uh, yep, and this just came out on Friday. That's so, crazy. how do you think of something that fast? Well, you, you, like we have ideas that we've been talking about for a long time. Uh, the letter of intent doesn't need to be fancy, but it needs to outline that. Then there's, I guess, there's a. Um, there's another deadline. July 26 is when you submit the full grant application. Yeah. So, so if oh. they approve your letter of intent, then you then you go to a grant application, and then, and then, then there's a bidders conference, and they award the grants in October. Wow. So the letter of intent doesn't have to be fancy. It can outline the program. So what are you thinking? Who writes the grant? They help us. Okay. You know, first we have to do a letter of intent and the letter of intent has to be moved along to the next, you know, the, the next level. And at that point we will get help for whatever, if, if we pass, if we, if we make the grade. Um, so how do you prioritize? Which, which is the best? Well, what do you need most? That's our job. Right. And, and so some of the grants that have been awarded or that have been going for the last two grant cycles, there are 10 of them. So the Truro Council on Aging provides safe and reliable transportation for their older frail adults to medical and other appointments, inclu including helping seniors attend social activities and avoid isolation. So that's what the Truro Council on Aging does. This good, the Good Samaritans get some, South Coast Legal Services. <clears throat> Martha's Vineyard Community Services provides in-home community short-term assessment intervention and referral for mental health and substance abuse issues for elders 60 and over. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a one sentence description of what they get money for. So what are you thinking our intent should be? Should it be for, um isolation, I mean, you know, help with um, socialing with our, our elders, because we have to pick one, one specific, right. correct? I mean, what and do we so, want to... I mean, so the Brewster Council on Aging provides funding for a transportation program. So, I mean, we've been talking about the village to village, haven't we? We talked about that before. Um, COVID. I would like, I guess, Allison, this is just my response to village to village. It like we'd have to create a whole administration of it for village to village. And I don't know that we have the capability to do that. I mean, we have to seek volunteers. We have to put them all through volunteer training and make sure that they're actually legitimate. <laughs> it just seems like village to village is creating kind of a big administrative administration, whereas I think we're too small to do something like that. Yeah, I think that we that we could put put the intent forward. And part of what we'd be needing the money for is to pay an administrator. Although that would be very temporary. Well, two years, we could give someone two years. We'd need more Most of these grants are like 5000 to $12,000. That's not much pay. Well, if, if, you know, for running a website and, you know. Well, is, I mean, is what village to village the most appropriate? I mean, is that going to get us, is that going to help our, our elders the most? I mean, how many people would we get? I'm, I'm assuming you're saying village to village is Nantucket to Truro, or Truro to Nantucket. I mean, is this what, is that what you're speaking of? Well, so um, village They're, to village gets volunteers to help seniors and it could be, you know, we could, it could just be for transportation to start, but other village to villages have, you know, have people who qualify join, they pay a, um, a, a set amount, like a hundred bucks to become a client. And then when they need something, they go to the website. I mean, um, I've, you know, people have explained it to me and they say it's really easy. I mean, well, I, I think that that sounds really elaborate for what Nantucket needs are. I think very specific. I, I'm, I'm feeling like it would be um, that makes sense for on the mainland, maybe, but perhaps the Nantucket factor could be more specific and more um, 
you know, go to our size of the community that it's needs. I think the needs are more, um, we, like transportation or we, well transportation for off island or transportation to, to you know like we have the elder affairs or the transfer bus transport bus for um people if they, when they sign up but i mean like is there something more that would be right immediate for us to do without having to get an administrator without having to you know the grant could be let's put the funds into getting um, iPads for everybody or Comcast connections for people that are not there and then maybe, you know, teachers for them. I'd like to suggest something small. The fire department has this um, generation safe program where they come into an elder's house and they check the fire, um, the smoke alarms and they make sure they have current batteries. And then they look around the house to see if there's anything else that needs doing. And they often see that what's needed are grab bars in the shower or other places, but they don't have enough funding all the time to have a carpenter come in and add these grab bars or somebody to do something a little more elaborate like a ramp if they're suddenly in a wheelchair. And I just like to suggest doing something where we can use the existing fire department and maybe set up some kind of a model with um, contractors on the island who'd be willing to work for small amount. I, I don't think anyone wants to work for free, even for seniors, but use the money to pay small amounts for people to go in and do very specific things that seniors might need in their homes. I think that sounds great. That I sounds do. Like something so, that would be very usable. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm up for anything. I mean, that's, that's sort of what village to village is, but it, it's, um, but instead of being administered through the fire department, it's, uh, it's done by, it, you know, it, and it includes transportation and, um, you know, the, the bus only works during business hours. So if you want to go to church and you're a senior without transportation, you can't, if you want to go to a social, like a play at night, the, the bus doesn't run. So now, you know, Allison, how do they get around the insurance issue? Because if I'm a volunteer driver and I have an accident with a senior in my car, I will get sued. Um, I can send you a link, Marianne, um, because Kathy Greeter and I went several years ago on this board, we're getting really close to putting together something for village to village and then she went off the board and you know there are models there are I mean other communities do it all over the Cape and and there's a there's one there's a, a a website and it's it's all scheduled and a message goes out such and such needs this done who can do it and so the volunteers are alerted that someone needs something and then they claim to do it and then do it so the, you know, there's a vetting process, there's a Corey check for people, and there's gotta be some insurance sign off because people are doing it all over the place. All of that costs a lot of, more than 5,000 to $12,000 a year, I guess is my feeling. It's, it seems elaborate to me, but that's just my yeah. reaction to it. I, I would like to actually see something that works. I, I know that the Beacon Hill one worked or maybe it still works, but that was 500 bucks a year for a senior just to be um, a member. It wasn't a hundred, it, it's expensive. The, the vineyards is a hundred hmm. and that's for a family, that's for a household. But and it's working smoothly? Yeah, yeah, because it's volunteer basically. Hmm. And you know, if, so um, let me see if I can not to be down on volunteers, but you can't always count on volunteers just because they are volunteers. So I, that's why I think we should start with something small, like something through the fire department or else could we uh, continue memory cafes by using this, which would um, benefit caregivers. I'm looking at Neighborhood Health Falmouth and their single membership is 600, household is 900 and seasonal is 300 to 450. Yeah, it's expensive. That takes a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, just just another thought. Like, I know that um, 
the Nantucket Book Festival is coming up, um, or even the whole One Book, One Island. Um, when that does come out, like everyone gets copy and shares, but it's very rare that we have um, copies for large print for seniors. So I always have to buy the large print on Amazon. So I didn't know if it could be possible to get large print um, books for, you know, whatever is at the book festival or, or even one book, one island. For seniors, something. What'd you say, Jude? I, I didn't hear that. How about just something like a book club for seniors? Just something new, something different. Mm. What we and, and so so what we're trying, you know, hopefully we'll get funding for a program. I don't know. If, and so oh, the isolation, he, transportation, the things that because they did an elder needs assessment and they came up with the top 10 things that people on the that are served by this um, ESCCI need. And so that's their whole grant process as they have to do. First of all, poll everyone in their area. Second of all, find out what the needs are. Third of all, send out this RFP. So everything is in some pretty tight categories. So can we, is there something, I mean, I love the idea of what Mary Ann was saying. I think the assessment to have um, elders homes assessed for safety and, um, you know, and then move on to, you know, getting the ramp done um, if it was necessary. I know we used to do it with my church, but, you know, I think that, um, can we, I mean, I love the book idea and I love the fire department idea that, you know, that I think that that's something that could be, I mean, I'm, I'm think village sounds fabulous, but there's, you know, hundred dollars, even, you know, $600, but even a hundred dollars can be a lot for a single elder person. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's something that's just so immediate and so would be so right on effective from the get go. Like we get the money and boom, we give it to the fire department and boom, we have four homes done in a month or a week or something. And I just think it's like a wee bit of an instant gratification, which is what I think we need to see that we're doing something. Yeah. And so, um, so part of the letter of intent talks about how many people will be served. So, um, you know, we have to estimate or come up with a number of how many people will likely benefit by the program. And if we only have $5,000, and I'm just, you know, poking holes in anything, please do. But, um, you know, if we put ramps into two houses, we're probably done with our $5,000. Well, I feel like two houses is better than zero houses. And I don't know that that many people will need ramps in a year. Right. And there's also the rental or the ease of ramps that you can get that can go up for, you know, an episodic time, you know, like somebody falls or has to get in and out for a month. Yeah. That ramp can just be put up. I know that, that they have that because we used it for Steve. But I think that, um, I think that the, the learning curve on the villages is, is daunting. And quite frankly, I don't think that we have that kind of zippity doo da to get into that right, right. now. Um, and I, you know, I think the letter of intent, I'm kind of hot on the fire department idea. I know I live in Centerville, but I like the <laughs> idea. <laughs> is there, is there any way to, to talk to, you know, what is it, uh, our island ride to see what dollar amount would cost extra for like, you know, church on Sundays or that evening play that that 5,000 could be equated to? Yeah, can, do you have to be with one intent? Can you just say we'd like to do with 5,000, we'd like to do one is the fire department for you know 10 houses and Sunday and evening rides for elders to go to church and social factor. Yeah, yeah. Allison, couldn't we submit two and see if one, maybe just one of yeah. them? Yeah, <laughs> We could do one for off time travel and another one for um, home modifications. How about thinking something guys. new? Like everybody's been stuck in their house, like a counseling session or a counseling group. 
um, long ago, there was a mother's group that all met. Everybody got together and talked. Uh, something, I mean, I'm just throwing some new ideas. The fire department does do the assessment. I, I'm just thinking maybe we should think of something new and exciting to bring seniors together. Well, I don't know if anybody went to the salt marsh yesterday for the grand opening. Mm -hmm. Was anybody there? I, I didn't mm -hmm. go. There was standing room, room only. It was oh, nice. packed. There were not enough chairs, and that means every chair was already taken. It was mobbed. How'd it look? Oh, well, it's in process. Uh. <laughs> but in terms of energy among seniors and getting out now and coming back to the salt marsh, I don't think there's any problem with getting people out. And so, so, so the top things that they are looking for, requests for, increase access to information through outreach. That's the top one. Support services, which reduce isolation. So the book group would fit in that. Technology, transportation, medical appointments, support for caregivers, home modification, and LGBT and other innovative programs. So the things that we've talked about fit under the guidelines, which is good. And do you have to do, do you have, I mean, how many letters of intent do you submit? I mean, one with what you're thinking that you're going to get five or 10,000 or. I think that each entity probably puts out one. I don't know if Council on Aging can write three different ones. Okay. So they, might, just be, they might rather have it be one program that encompasses more than one thing. So I don't, I've, I've never done one year program and then that's it. We have to apply again. Two years and if it's successful you can apply again because the only one that nantucket has is and then fizzle afterwards actually i think we have two one was for these drive-through um meals that we've had that was oh, good i didn't know that yeah go ahead yeah. that wasn't this program oh and another one was pascon for um counseling from pascon so palliative services. So that's the only one Nantucket has is they they fund um, the uh, one of the caregiver support groups or partially fund they get so Pascon gets money from this grant. Um, but that's the only one people don't even apply from Nantucket. So isn't that why we're trying to get yeah yeah this this time. <laughs> Well, uh, I think that um, I'd like to make a motion that this in this letter of intent is uh, authored and you know written by the, for CO by COA in, in, and requesting that they give us consideration for the book club and the home modification factor. That's my opinion. Yeah. Anyone, anyone want to word that for my? Can I, note? Can I just ask a question? What would be the costs associated with a book club? The books. large print books. Oh, you're assuming that everybody needs a look. Oh, you're okay. So we're, we're not, we're not, I'm not assuming. However, <laughs> every time that one book, one island pops up anywhere, uh, four but or five of my residents come in and say, than a book club. Uh, so yeah. could I go back to Jude and ask, when you think of a book club, what are the costs associated with that book club? I guess a space, uh, I don't know, not much. Food, coffee. Um, Booze. Books. <laughs> I mean, is that something we could add to the salt marsh? Yeah, that could be a, it's a program yeah. run through the salt marsh. I agree. Yeah, but I'm not sure it requires additional funding. I mean, we have a space and they can provide tea and cookies. That's not a problem. But it would be having copies of whatever book is decided. Yeah. Isn't that something you could ask the NCEA for? Is five large print books and coffee money for the book club? Yeah, I don't think it really needs a big, huge grant for that. I mean, I think that unless we earmark it under the umbrella of, um, 
I don't know. Mouse to it then. Yeah, the salt mouse you can. Yeah, and the NCEA can do that that thing. But I'd like to amend Kendra's motion and and consider two things. One is the off time travel for people to go to church or someplace other than the doctor uh, to see if we can extend the hours of um, the bus service for that. Um, and then the other thing for home modifications and see if we can submit two. I second it. Was that amended by? Is there more discussion if people want to weigh Mary in? Mary Ann, to add transportation, to add um, off schedule transportation? Yeah, off schedule transportation. And second by, um, I, I, those are the two things that I, if we had to vote on something, that's what I would, the two things that I would vote for. So is there other discussion that people want to weigh in again? Um, yeah, I'd like, I'd like people to take an opportunity to review the title I mean, the grants that have been provided. So do you, do you have that stuff, Marianne? Or yeah. did Laura have it to send out? Or We did I have that. I read that a while ago. I mean, this grant thing has been up, up like every year that I've been on the board. Huh. Right? Allison, what, what's the uh, website? Um, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands, ESCCI.org. Yeah, so I have, Allison, I have my is, notes from like two. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while, and we never, we never did a letter of intent or for the grant. Never. Allison, question. Yes. Um, I'm curious to know about people who want to go to church and all that. I, I think that's really a priority, don't you think, for these people that are homebound? Yeah, and is there you know, any? Most churches have people that do that themselves. Okay. It's like going to. A birthday party or going to a play or going gotcha. to something else that there's so many so many volunteers i know i joined a church over here that there are more people that were at church that were volunteers driving people so it was um yeah everybody's hot to get to help and get to church oh good it's 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 like more of the things that um grocery shopping um medical appointments you medical know. appointments i think are um all during the day so they're i mean i have talked to sherry about that and she said people's doctor's appointments are during the day so they can get the ride they can get the island ride yeah so this is what the brewster council on aging's program says provides funding for a transportation program pays mileage for volunteers who drive seniors to medical appointments and that's what they get money for. I don't know how much or what their grant looked like, but that's a pretty general thing. And isn't that covered by our island ride on Nantucket? I mean, that we don't need volunteers to drive people to medical appointments. Well, I mean, they have a, a really great um, transportation program as well. And they obviously still are using volunteers. So might depend on the person's level of comfort who, who's getting the ride. I don't know. I guess I wanna go back to building a bureaucracy because getting volunteers means building a bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's just, let's try to get the fire, the fire department's home modification thing hashed out. And the, unscheduled um, drives or whatever you're calling it sorry what's the off schedule um what did i say transportation program well I, I would vote for the home modifications as one thing to do to try to be successful off the bat and then see if we can get more complicated next time yep I just think if you're starting with a fireman, they'll recognize needs that we may not see or know about. 
and it's I think it's a batting spot um, myself personally. And I think that a lot of the elders would would welcome it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I really do. I think that they would. Now, who does who are we relying on to do the inspection, the fire department, which is a tough call because from the health fair two years ago, I signed up for an assessment and never heard. So oh, interesting. Sure. Really? Oh, Jude, I'm so shocked. The person, are you a senior? Yeah. yeah. Are you 60 years or older? Ah. Uh, um, Barbara. Um, Barbara. Barbara yeah. Vondergrove. You have to be a senior to be part of the program. I got, I, I signed up for the assessment and got it. Wish yeah. I hadn't. <laughs> Because I had to do I stuff, have, but so I assume that maybe they're just too busy, and you know, I wasn't that much of an in a need, but I would have liked them to come check all my um, smoke detectors and stuff. And I, well, are you like Marianne said? Are you sixty? God, guys, I'm sixty nine. Oh well, you are <laughs> one hot sixty nine year old. <laughs> The person who runs this program is Sean Mitchell. Right. There is no person more reliable in the world than Sean. I'm so I, I'm, you know, I'm fine now. We did check ours all, oh. but but they were, you know, telling me what a great program it was, and I got my spatula and spoke up and and signed in, and that's oh. never. I'm so I'm just surprised. saying if it's if he does, I mean we're counting on someone to take their time that's not council of age to go do this assessment but, but is that but that's what the funding is for is that they do that and we give them we pay them to do this oh. correct right so they, don't, they have money they don't have enough money to do all the grab bars and right or whatever whatever other uh carpentry requirements are needed okay so, so we would be asking for money and making it available to the fire department for hardware, as well as locating contractors who would be willing to install that. Like what's our role? And paying yes, the what, firemen, what right, to check. No, they already have this. This is an existing program. We would just be supplementing their program. With, for the accessories, when they make the determination that the house needs, they do batteries and stuff like, and actual new smoke detectors, but they don't put, like Marianne said, you get the grab bars, yeah. okay. the sticky things on the shower. Yeah, that's a great idea. Supply all that. So that's what we would basically, that's what we're asking the grant for is to modify homes, but on, um, uh, amplify the services of the fire department. And then pay for labor needed to That's install. If, if, if requested and a ramp is needed, then, you know, and I go to a ramp. I mean, if, if they can do the, um, the grab bars and stuff, but if not, then a volunteer or then a, we pay somebody to do that. I mean, I put up grab bars, but anyhow, yeah, I think that that's what the, the letter should be of intent should say. And then the grant we write, we'd have to be really specific because that's what they asked for, for the grant. Like how much, like one house would need a hundred dollars in, in emergent, in um, handicap door handles yeah. or, you know, threshold things that a wheelchair could get over or grab bars. You're going to have to be real specific in the grant part of it if we get approved with the intent letter. Do we need the fire department to piggyback on this letter saying anything? Well, I think before we write the letter of intent, we should talk with Sean Mitchell, who runs that program, to make sure that we're coordinated. We need to do that soon, right? This has to be done next week. Yeah. yeah. Well, the letter intent is, I don't know. I mean, after we get, the, once we write, I don't think it's a problem to, we have to get in touch with them before the intent. I mean, it's not gonna take place until next year because it, the money doesn't come 
it doesn't even get, you don't even win until October and that won't be money won't be given to your accountant probably until like December. I mean, I've never applied for a grant or I don't know where the actual money goes and whose checking account pays the hey, pays the well, people. Um, I've written it. I've done a grant for the Girl Scout camp and um, that the, the administration, uh, we had an administration checking account, but I think that that's the type of thing that would all be set up. If you get the grant, it gives you the explanations about where everything goes. For you instance, know so like, you know, I think that if the Council on Aging is the person who writes, who, who gets the grant money, the money would have to go to the town and the town would have to pay the contractors. So that's a level of administration that, you uh -oh. know. Well, then, then, well, then this becomes a, a mute point because what's the point of us doing this if we're not even going to be able to, so then it goes to the town. So then the town does that. We are the town. Yeah, but I thought that we had to, the actual requests had to be made through a nonprofit organization so that the NCEA would actually be asking for this money. But I, I think we can iron out these details yeah. once we know what it well, is. I mean, yeah, I mean, as long as it, <coughs> but the NCEA is nonprofit, right? Yes. yes, and they're not part of the town. Correct. No. They're a five hundred one c three. Right, but so are, but we're part of the town. Correct. So we can't be asking. Well, I would well, be glad to volunteer to write a draft, Allison, and pass this. Uh, well, by you definitely, but um, I'd be glad to begin this process right now today writing something that you could respond to and other people who need to respond could just to get the ball rolling. You know, both the Barnesable Council on Aging and the Brewster Council on Aging have, have, the, have one of these grants. So it is possible for a COA to have one. Yeah. They're probably set up differently. They are set up. You know what, instead of, you know, I think just go forward. Like Marianne said, I think just- One step at a time. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and 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 um, oh, go ahead. Aging have a lot of money in their account that we never use for anything. Yep. Why don't we put that on the agenda for next week and start spending it somehow? I don't know. It's it's just... better to do and then ask for forgiveness, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a thought. I mean, I love that line. We have... whose money are we talking about here? Council of Aging, don't we have a bank account that? No, it's all yeah. with the town. I think it's just let's go forward account. with the grant. Let's just, you know, we'll, the, okay. the, the intent letter and see what we get. Right. And if, you know, if it doesn't happen, then we, you know. You wanna make a motion, Kendra? Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> I thought we already did. Okay, yeah. so the, the well, I would. I amended it, and I'd like to unamend it. So, <laughs> okay. I'm a. So I have a motion to go ahead with it. <laughs> and the, the motion to go ahead with CD motion. Yeah, I'm just going to start drinking real soon. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Marianne. Go ahead. <laughs> um, we're seeking funding for home modifications um, in concert with the fire department, if they, if they agree to this. Um, yeah. So does anybody want to second this motion? I second it, Susie. Um, Is there any more discussion? Okay, let's vote. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, it carries. All right. Okay. Um, Move on to the next thing on the agenda. Um, Jericho's not here to give us an update. So Laura, are you still with us? I am still here. Um, I can just chime in a little bit for Jericho that uh, they're still doing the um, vaccines at the salt marsh. 
So on Wednesdays, they're doing the J and J and they will have a couple of Pfizer's available. And then um, they did a Pfizer last week. So in three weeks on the 17th, they'll do another Pfizer for the second shot. So that's continuing to happen uh, to get people since can the you, hospital and the BFW are not doing it. Can you request which one you want? Um, you you kind of can like tonight they're they're doing the J and J to get kind of the workers that you know may you know for after hours kind of I guess because the VFW was during the day so the J and J is just the one shot I the know. Pfizer they're keeping um, for kids so if there's a child under eighteen you know between what is it twelve and eighteen they can come and get a Pfizer tonight. And then get a second one. I guess they'll. What about an older there. person who wants, does not want the J and J. They want the Pfizer. Can they? Can I yeah. tell them to go? Yep. Sure can. Sure can. So that's what he's been doing, amongst I'm sure a hundred other things. Um, so yesterday we had our social. It was fabulous. It was just so awesome to see everybody and. They stayed and stayed and chatted and oh. it was just, it was so nice. Nice. And this morning it was like Grand Central again between, you know, the first aerobics class and the second aerobics class and no parking and all that fun stuff. So it was just great to see everybody. And now we have a house full of Mahjong and bingo players. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. It's just like the old day. happened. Yeah. Oh, it was fabulous. That. And so, so everyone, everyone's out. No one's, no one's afraid or wearing a mask or anything. Well, we have one person wearing a mask right now, but this morning nobody was. If they're not here, I don't know. Right. If they're scared or not, or if they just couldn't make it today. But nobody's called and said anything, you know. And everybody knows it was advertised that masks are not required. So. They're just happy. I don't think anybody's scared. I think everybody would like to get out. And everybody here is vaccinated. Yeah. You know, that's not the group that's wary about it. They're the ones who want to get it. So it's been fabulous. That's so, so gonna, exciting. It's very exciting. It's just like old times. Definitely. So we'll be busy. And that's it. We're rolling. Yeah. Is the salt marsh open for passports and all that stuff again? The passports have been open for a while. Yes, that's something through the state that we started a while ago. Yep. What Salt about Church? congregate lunch? No, I have emailed Sherry Hunt at Elder Services. She has emailed uh, her people over in Dennis and I haven't heard anything yet, so. Yeah, oh, actually, you know, I, I, at, at the SCCI meeting, they talked about that, and that's a state thing, so. Yeah, there's lots yep. of paperwork and yep. a lot more stuff to go through, but we're ready anytime they are, so we're good to go. It's very exciting. And that's it. Great, mm -hmm. thanks, Laura. You're welcome. Allison, you're next up with Dementia Friendly Nantucket. Yeah, so, um, so this is another program that we really wanted to get started a couple of years ago. And I think now that COVID is unwinding, we have a couple of um, resources to the town that I want to explore. Um, but I did suggest to Rachel that it would become Jericho's job to set up a memory cafe and that didn't go over well. <laughs> Um, however, a couple of different people, um, someone from Pascon and then somebody from um, NAMI, NAMI were in touch with me about the Memory Cafe and I'm meeting with the ED or AD or somebody from NAM NAMI, how do you say that? What does it stand for? Nantucket Alliance for Mental Health. NA, NA, Nantucket, MI, yeah, for mental illness. Oh, okay. And so uh, it's not Fairgrounds, it's not Gosnell, but it combined with another 
chapter off island. So there's some background, you know, backup support. But Suzanne Franzuto and Sue Mittenthal are administrators for the program. And they, and I'm gonna meet with them about starting the memory cafe because they, they could be a 501c3. They could, um, and so that's the most pressing, I think, part of the dementia friendly program due to COVID. Um, now that things are loosening up, I think there'll be more opportunities to do trainings. Like I know Marion, you went to a couple of them, not last March, but the March before. Yeah, so yeah. I think I think we can put that on our agenda for the, maybe the next meeting. Um, but it'd be really great to get the uh, memory cafe up and running as soon as possible. And I think that the NAMI would have a professional to run it. It could be an umbrella foundations to all that stuff. Who's pounding on the stairs? <laughs> Not me. So anyway, I'd like to put the, the dementia friendly Nantucket on the agenda for our next meeting, perhaps. Perfect. There's also, um, there are also some wheelers that are trying to get the wheeler program back up and running. And if we can't do it for the island home residents, because there are a lot of um, DPH, what is that noise? Laura, is there construction going on at the salt marsh? No, it's not me. I was muted. Oh. Um, anyway. Um, oh yeah. So wheelers might not be able to be something that is that happens to the island home residents right away, but we'd like to get a community program for wheelers established. So Council on Aging could be really helpful in trying to identify people who would a benefit by a, a ride and can get to the Don Allen's to get on the bike to go for who's a running ride. it who's running it now nobody it hasn't been run for since COVID hmm. and and Darcy is gone so um Cindy and um Cindy Cahill and her husband what's his name they live out in Walwinet Anyway, they are, they've been wheelers, you know, so I'm working with them to get the wheelers program going. And we could use help from this group when we look to do outreach. First, we have to see if the bikes work, but. Are you imagining that Laura could put it in the newsletter? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, and maybe this, the, like the fire department, you know, use some of the same resources that we are looking to for, people who are homebound and need, you know, I mean, because there are people who would appreciate getting out like that <clears throat> if we can make it easy for them. So, yeah. you know, volunteers are always, I mean, you know, Joe Aguirre had a transportation program grant through elder services several years ago, nobody used it. So he had to return the money. You know, oh. do you put a bunch of volunteers together to, to take people out on bikes if you don't know that you're going to have people to go for the rides. So, you know, sort of have to cover both sides at the same time. Well, advertise, right? I mean, put it out there, make it exciting. Yeah. On Instagram, they don't watch, they don't look at Instagram. <laughs> yeah, but their kids do, who might be the people who sign them up. Not. Yeah. <sighs> so anything else on dementia friendly? Nope. You I have think... the next item on the agenda too. So you might want to just move on into. Um... Yes. My apologies, but I'm going to have to leave at 2.30 because um, I have to meet somebody. Is there, is there anything I need to know quickly before I depart? Because we need to make sure we have a quorum, right? Um, yeah. Well, I think we already talked about what the last elder services meeting was all about um, and that is the grant so that was that's the majority of what we discussed as well as the opening and it's the governor's decision about you know 
and and they did talk about the congregate meal program being <laughs> continuing to be sus suspended until they get a DPH ruling. So that's a that's it for me. Um, and I'll be quick. I'm the last thing on here. Just to, an update on what NCEA has been up to, which is mostly really they've been focused on all of the internal uh, upgrades at the salt marsh, uh, which are ongoing. And if you go in there, you'll see that it's one big open space. Now there is going to be a wall that will, will replace what used to be the folding door. And uh, correct me, Laura, if I'm wrong, but I understand that wall, I think will go to about waist high and above that it's going to be windows. So you'll be able to see in there. Um, and the salt marsh will close for a few days when they actually install that wall. So I don't know when that's gonna be and I don't think they know when that's gonna be. Um, the last thing from NCEA is they're going to be looking for people to suggest um, people who might be recognized as having really helped out elders during the whole COVID thing. So um, in the next couple of months, you might be getting a request from Joe Aguirre um, to find out names of people that could be um, noticed um, at some kind of an event at the Salt Marsh um, to thank them for all that they've contributed to seniors during COVID. So that's about it, except I want to mention uh, Seniors of the Year. Yeah. Um, we, the, <laughs> we, the Council on Aging, sent flowers to Joanne Polster. She sent a lovely thank you note to Laura. Laura, are you still here? No. Um, if people are interested, I'm sure Laura could send out a copy of the thank you note. It was very lovely. And as for Rich Leone, um, when I talked to him the day uh, that we nominated him, he told me that the following Tuesday, he was going to be leaving the island for a series of surgeries and would be gone for a while. So um, I did not send anything to him, although he was delighted to be nominated. Um, and well, I think we'll, we'll wait until he's back and in good health. Um, and I think we will eventually be able to have a luncheon to recognize both of them. So the latest on the seniors of the year. I Aren't we going to put them to work to do something? Pardon? Weren't we trying to find ways that they could be um, a little more out in the public? Correct. But I think that's going to be slow with COVID being what it is. Yeah. So we'll find ways. I think we need to honor them first before we get them, put them to work. <laughs> But I see Laura with the thank you note. And do you have to Bye, go? Susie. Susie? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to wind up in a second anyway. Laura, are you there with Joanne? I, I am. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, please. It says to the Nantucket Council on Aging, thank you so much for the lovely bouquet. That makes my work table a delightful place to be. It is a constant reminder of the honor that has been bestowed upon me a memorable and once in a lifetime experience for which I am deeply grateful to all those who found me worthy. Cordially, Joanne Polster. Oh, that was nice. Oh, she's so lovely. Very. So we've come to the end of our agenda. And I guess I'd like to um, close the meeting if somebody wants to make a motion. I, mo I move that we close the meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are we meeting in person? I second it. Well, yep. Yes, you'll be getting notification. Of, oh, you, you might want to um, attend via, via Facebook or something. I'm sorry? Andrea, will you want to attend via Facebook or some well, I'm going to have to figure um, I'm going to have to figure this out because I'm not going to be any good because if we're um, I can't vote, right? Unless yeah, you can vote. Oh, I could. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll discuss it. I'll see. I'll be either there on a Facebook or um, in person. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um. Everybody want to vote to end the meeting? Yes. Uh, yay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you to everybody. All right, bye. Bye, guys. Bye. So long. Bye, dude. Bye.